episode three of Patron Saints. Saints. My voice is getting really dry. And my hair is frizzy, my face is oily, and my glasses make me look like a poindexter. But I need them, because I'm an old person. So, I was flipping through the book again. Couldn't put it down. And some of the saints have long backstories, and some of them don't. And I saw this one, and I thought... It's pretty apropos right now, considering we have a snow day tomorrow. Texas is having rolling blackouts because they got a huge storm. And it's all in the south. People are going crazy. The only warm part is like southern Florida. It's like negatives up in Canada. So I figured this one caught my eye. I'm going to do this one. Today's patron saint is Our Lady of the Snow. That's all her name is, Our Lady of the Snow. We'll find out more. But she's the patron saint of snow. Just snow. Just snow. Mm -hmm. Do we pray to her to get some, or do we pray to her to relieve some? Do the Catholics know about this? What are they doing down there in the South? They should be, they should be on top of this. Anyway, I find these saints so interesting and the, bet, the history, that's why I'm interested is the history of stuff like this and why people revere these people and what their sainthoods mean. That's why I'm doing this. It's not because I worship them. It's because I want to learn stuff and, and help, help you learn stuff too. So, this is a short one. Let me get in my reading spot. Okay. Our Lady of the Snow, feast day, August 5th. Where's the snow on August 5th? The Southern Hemisphere? Maybe? I have to ask my Aussie friends. You get snow? No, they don't get snow down there. But why Why would it snow on August? Anyway, every winter for generations, Catholic school children have, to, have prayed to Our Lady of the Snow to grant them a snow day. I wonder if our locals did that this time. We have a few Catholic elementary schools that go to grade six or seven. Our Catholic high school had to close for lack of funding because the Buffalo Diocese went broke. I wonder why they went broke. They they went bankrupt for reasons that are very easily Googleable. Googleable. Doing things right. The Catholic Diocese of Buffalo files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Good evening, everyone. Ashley Rowe is off tonight. Today's legal action allows the church to continue operations as it deals with mounting sex abuse lawsuits. Our team coverage begins tonight live outside diocesan headquarters in downtown Buffalo with senior reporter Eileen Buckley. Well, Jeff, documents say the diocese has between $10 million to $50 million in assets. It owes $3.5 million to a list of 20 top creditors. M&T Bank tops the list at $1.6 million, but the others are 19 victims who filed child sexual abuse lawsuits against the diocese. You can figure it out with one guess, though. Anyway, according to an old legend, on the night of August 4th, in the year 352, holy crap, at the height of a steamy Roman summer, our lady appeared to a senator named John and his wife, commanding them to build a church in her honor on the Esquiline Hill. That same night, she also appeared to Pope Liberius and gave him the same instructions. She's telling the Pope what to do. All right, you go, girl. The next morning, John, his wife, and the Pope met on the Esquiline Hill, where they found something extraordinary. Outlined in the snow, the plan for the Basilica the Blessed Virgin wanted them to build. What Blessed Virgin? The Blessed Virgin? Or is Our Lady of the Snow a Blessed Virgin? This is confusing. Um, hmm. The church built on the spot is the Basilica of St. Mary Major. Okay, so we know which Holy Virgin we're referring to now. Thank you. 
To commemorate the miracle of the snow, every August 5th during Mass in the Basilica, a shower of white rose petals are released from above to fall onto the congregation. Is this basilica still standing? The Basilica of Mary Major on Esquiline Hill? It's called Major because it's the most important church in the West that is dedicated to the Blessed Virgin. It is filled with extraordinary works of art, including a series of 5th century mosaics that extend along the length of the main aisle. Now, those are pretty, and I've watched a few things about how they make them, and they're really, they're really a hard thing to do. It takes skill. It really does. The ceiling was gilded with the first shipment of gold to arrive in Europe from the New World, the gift of Ferdinand and Isabella. The church is rich in relics as well. Beneath the high altar is a crystal and gilt bronze casket. Our pieces of the wood said to be from the Bethlehem manger in which Mary pl placed the Christ child. Now, I don't know about holy relics. I had a conversation about holy relics a while ago. And I don't know. How can you validate stuff like that? Word of mouth? How, how can you... It's not like you can go to Antiques Roadshow and say, here, I have a nail from the Holy Cross. How are you gonna validate stuff like that? I don't get it. Even when I was a believer, I didn't believe in holy relics because there's no uh, like paper trail or anything like that. You just gotta take someone's word for it. And then, like, the Shroud of Turin, how many times has it been examined? Think about stuff like that. Anyway, her picture is on page 363. Now, her picture is not very expounding. It just says, Maria S.S. Della Neve. And it says, Our Lady of the Snow. See, I don't... Here she is. Pray for a snow day, Catholics. There you go. And her, on her altar is wood from the manger. Again, I don't know. So I'll see you next time. I'm going to flip through this book again. Stay tuned. I don't know if I'm going to do all 300, but some of these are pretty interesting. Have a good night.